Hello everyone, Pallets here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. We have landed on Lily today. Last year, when we showed off Lily, it was actually the same day she got her rework, and the video was recorded like a week before that. So, uh, technically she was reworked last year, but I didn't show it off in last year's A through Z playthrough. Now, rather than going over all of the changes that happened, because every part of her talent tree was altered in some way, I'm going to give you the highlights. So Let's Go is arguably the best cleanse in the entire game. Not only does it make a character unstoppable for one second, it's also going to provide a heal to that target, and if you're, lose if you're using fast feet properly, you're also going to be reducing the cooldown of your cleanse just by playing Lily normally. Now, she's been criticized as being a character that's too easy to play, right? This auto-targets a heal for you. This auto blinds for you. Both of her heroic abilities just kind of happen. But this kind of talent allows you to show off how good you are at supporting by knowing when to cleanse, cleansing the right person, or shit, maybe even using it as a just point and click heal to keep someone from dying. Really, really cool ability. They also drastically changed how Jug of 1000 Cups works. So you could channel for up to six seconds. But the longer you channel it, the longer the cooldown of the ability is. So if you start channeling and realize, you know what, every, everyone's fine, you can go ahead and stop the channel so you can have your heroic ability up again faster, which is really, really cool. And as far as I know, no other ability in the game quite works like that. Speaking of healing, if you would like to help sick kids, we're doing a 24-hour charity live stream on November 10th on twitch.tv slash mfpallytime. If you would like to stop by, that would be fantastic. We're trying to raise $40,000 for Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Why am I telling you this in this video? Well, YouTube decided that it only wanted to send out the Extra Life announcement video to a fraction of our normal audience. So, if you didn't know we were doing a charity stream, let me know in the comments. All right, here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Towers of Doom so cool. today. The, or excuse me, Sky Temple. What the fuck am I talking about? Sorry, I was looking at a stream, and they were playing Towers of Doom while I was on the loading screen. Uh, from the team, Lili, Malganis, who still has a 60% win rate and has not been nerfed yet as far as we know. Vala, Stitches, and Jaina versus Lunara, White Mane, Zagara, Blaze, and Mephisto. Hey, how's it going? Now, I really like Eager Adventure at level 1. It's not as good as it used to be. It has been nerfed in the past year. But uh, it's still fun. So it's going to increase the duration of Fast Feet by 100%. Fast Feet is our trait. Whenever we take damage, it reduces the cooldown on all of our abilities and gives us a movement speed increase. So effects like Lunara's Poison proc it multiple times. Don't mind if I do get poisoned, Lunara. Keep fucking hitting me. Uh, also, while we are poisoned by Lunara, it's going to be giving us mana back as well. Conjurer's Pursuit was a generic talent that Lili used to have access to. That has been removed in favor of Eager Adventure. Gives her a little bit more flair. Uses her own traits a little bit more. And honestly, it's pretty interesting. I'm really glad they did it. Now, I am only able to heal people that my Q dictates need healing the most based on the range of the Q. So you, ca you can't really pick who you heal in most situations, but with positioning, sometimes you can. So for instance, if I want to heal Jaina here and they're at the same percentage of HP, I simply have to get stitches out of this radius and then I would be able to heal exclusively Jaina if I decide to. Friendly teams doing a lot of brawling. Jaina and Vala are off in the other lane soaking, which of course is a good thing and I'm glad they're doing it. Uh, but we are having a pretty hard time keeping up our two front line here. <laughs> Tried really hard. So like I said, our Q ability smart casts, it's going to pick the lowest person, the person with the lowest health within its radius and just send that heal right over to them. You don't have to choose but you can manipulate it. Your W ability, Cloud Serpent, is what you use more for spot healing. It also increases damage just a little bit, but mostly just there for spot healing, I think. Uh, you throw this on an ally, it lasts eight seconds. It auto attacks with its own attack speed. It used to have an attack speed based on the character you attached it to. 
So characters like uh, Tychus, for instance, it was <laughs> like Lily was notorious for being able to not only increase Tychus's damage, but also increase healing. Now the healing was not baseline before with this ability. It was a talent. Now it is baseline. So if you want to heal, just put your fucking, put your serpent on somebody. Our E ability is the blinding wind. Once again, this is a smart cast ability. Anyone in this radius has a chance of being hit. Blinding Wind will venture out from your character towards enemy characters, prioritizing heroes. It'll do some damage. Uh, but it also applies a blind as well, which is pretty good. Stitches and Malganus are going to be dead in the middle lane. Staying a little bit too long by the looks of things. And uh, me and Va, we can just hang out up top. Uh, so, hitting heroes increases Cloud Serpent's duration, increases our spot healing, but blinding when slowing enemies is a decent way of getting crowd control on our blinding win- more crowd control. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Serpent auto attack, because we can have multiple applications of this ability out on the map if we pick that up. Was actually counting on the guy to knock me out of there, it didn't quite happen, but Stitches with the helping hand is gonna keep me alive. So, we wanna go to Vala, give her a Serpent. Go ahead and blind the enemy team's blaze here. And now every time the serpent that is attached to Vala attacks, she's going to receive a small heal. So if you have really offensive characters like a Malganus that's going to be able to stay in a fight forever, then the duration increase can allow them to get a passive heal. It's almost like having a region globe up all the time as well as a little extra damage. The friendly team does push back the enemy team in the top lane at least, and it looks like the enemy team does get all of middle, if I am not mistaken. We are pulling slightly ahead on XP with these tower shots. We are not going to finish off this top fort, but it's gonna be pretty low. And uh, we should be able to, to keep our XP lead. Not a bad start, not a bad start at all. Let's go ahead and try to heal up Malganus over here. If I call him Mephisto, I'm sorry they released too many fucking M characters back to back, okay? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. My brain only works so much, and I feel like I've been sick for a fucking month, so my brain's not working too well. Uh, the friendly team's taking over this mercenary camp down here, and they have been spotted. Unfortunately, Mephisto, the real one, coming in with a shit ton of damage there. Uh, I'm gonna have to leave this one, boys. We're probably not making it out. We're probably not making it out. To learn to pick ourselves up. And that is going to be a triple kill. Three kills for free for this enemy team, which is going to move them drastically ahead on XP. Also, we're not soaking the top lane currently, so they're getting free XP there as well. Now, for the stun, are we that worried about what this enemy team can do? They have a blaze stun, they potentially have a white main root, and that is it, so I'm not too worried. Instead, I'm going to pick up the good stuff. So, we're going to be able to apply a heal over time to anyone we hit with our Q ability. Bala should be able to hold off Cigar for a little while. They got middle fort there, which means they got a massive amount of XP. So we need to make sure we're soaking everything. Soak, team. Bottom lane, no XP generated for the team there. None whatsoever. Soon they shall bask in my... Wait, why did these guys just come from the bottom? What? Anyway, now whenever we heal, we're going to give a small heal over time as well. Alternatively, we could have gone for the Lightning Serpent, which would allow our W ability to bounce more projectiles and presumably last longer as a result. Give... their ten. Uh, but... I don't know. I never I never did the math on that. I never tested it. So like with our level four talent, whenever it attacks, it increases its duration, right? So what happens if the attack bounces? Does it stack its duration increase? I have no idea. Uh, the enemy team is channeling that bottom objective we cannot contest because they are level 10 and we don't want to die. Zagara in the top lane could easily go down there and reinforce them. So the team should be trying to push other areas on the map. As of right now, I am the only one pushing anything which kind of sucks. They are getting the uh, mercenary camp up in the top lane. And it looks like most of the enemy team has rotated away from bottom as well. Now, honestly, Malgana should probably be the one up here in the solo lane, up here in the top lane. It's definitely not Vala. She doesn't have any hope of trading with Zagara unless she's able to do a lot of burst damage. So, 
Yeah, a little unorganized. But what do you expect? Uh, and old is being channeled from Mephisto. Looks like Jaina may be overextended. Bottom lane has a Siege Giants pushing right up to the keep wall. The f oh, a Gorge securing a kill on White Mane, though. Ball is getting rotated on by Lunara. Let's make sure she knows. Let's make sure she gets out of there. Hopefully she is. Okay, we are level 10 now, and we can pick up the new jugs. What did he go for? Okay. Yeah, we can pick up the new jugs. Try to heal up our team. Let's put some pressure on the bottom lane by picking up this camp for free. Most of our team is down here. We could push with this to try to get some XP. Enemy team is creeping up on level 13 already, but we are a decent way into level 11. So if we could push with this, that would be really good. The enemy team is spread out as well. Lunari in the top lane continuing to shove that in. So we might be able to get a pick. We might be able to get a fight where we have numbers advantage. All of those things are obviously really good. Blaze moving through the jungle. We'll go ahead and blind him. And I was hoping to get in his way so he couldn't charge. But it looks like he's just using it there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and channel jugs now. No one's taking too much damage, but I want to make sure we stay high. And I'm going to get the full channel there. Going to go ahead and put another Serpent onto Stitches, who is going to be healed for quite a while with that. And just continuing to hold down our W ability to send healing out where healing is needed. Not able to pick up a single kill there, even though lots of ultimates were used. Uh, so the enemy team is going to be at a pretty decent spot moving in here. Serpent out on Jaina. Try to keep her alive with a little extra spot healing. We're going to be able to continue to throw jugs at her. No problem. Good hook from Stitches is going to pull in White Mane. But I don't have the CC to keep her slowed. And it looks like we are slowly being pushed out of this fight. Unfortunately, not too much I can do here, boys. Not too much I can do, especially when Stitches steps forward like that. Yep, that's a triple kill from a Mephisto channel. Dreams do come true. Unfortunately, not for our team. So they're going to be able to channel middle. They're going to be able to channel bottom. They have every lane being able to be pushed here. Uh, the enemy team in full control. They even have the option to get boss. Uh, regardless of what we of what they do, we're going to be losing a keep here. So we're going to have catapult pressure. Meanwhile, we haven't killed a single fort for the enemy team. So definitely falling behind. Do the best healing that I can. Maybe picking up the slow would change some things. I, I don't really think so. I don't think crowd control is the problem. So getting that cleanse wouldn't be too useful. Maybe the serpent auto attack would, would be a game changer. I don't really think so. I'm trying to make it work, boys. I'm trying, trying real hard. Ring of Frost being used, but she's not staying in to finish off the kill. We'll go ahead and start channeling jugs here to keep everyone healthy. Vala taking a bunch of damage here out front. Doing everything I can to keep her alive, but that was a shit ton of incoming DPS. Bottom fort has been lost. We're just sitting here channeling Qs on as many allies as we can. Stitches is going to be taken down, I believe. That was from the hunter killer of the enemy team. Malgain is staying in, wanting to secure these kills. We're going to stay in with him to the best of our ability. And we're also going to make it so our blinding winds can hit multiple targets. Now, that talent is usually picked with the slow, so you can slow more enemy members. Uh, we're picking up just because I want to be able to just, just hit as many people as I can with it. There is another talent that increases your spell power if you manage to hit two enemy heroes with your E ability, and that is really strong. There's, there's no getting around that. But I did not pick it up. Lenar is going to jump forward, pick up a kill on Vala, but because of our trait, I am not going to be taken down. And the game continues! Stitches split pushing the top lane, going in for that fort, is in danger of being rotated on right now, so we're going to head up to him, but it looks like the enemy team is moving down to the bottom lane mostly. Blaze showing on the map up top, though, is going to be cut off from the rest of his team. Maybe we can secure a kill on him? Uh, I just want to get in his way so he can't use his E to get out, but the bunker is going down. We'll give the Serpent to myself and start to reposition. None of our damage followed us in here. It's just our front line that's going to be in here fighting. 
Mugan is taking a lot of damage. Stitch is also taking a lot of damage. We see Gorge being used, but no damage here to follow up on it whatsoever. They're focusing me quite a bit here. Uh, might have to channel our ult just to keep Vala alive. Gonna go ahead and channel. Stop her channel. Ring of Frost was used, but hit nobody. Moving down to Jaina to try to keep her in range of the jugs. Lenara did jump a bit out of position. Mephisto taking a lot of fucking damage there too. But so far, we're not able to keep everyone super healthy. God, I just want people to die, please. Thank you. All right, we are completely out of mana. Malganus is pushing forward. If we can grab these region globes, that would be fantastic for me. And if I can get a minion to just hit me for a little bit of damage, I can regenerate a lot of it, a lot of mana here. Um, so I actually want to tank this if I'm able. I'm just gonna stand right in this fucking thing's hitbox, so we can regenerate some some uh, some mana. Okay, great. And again, I want this to fight me. Enemy team seems to be re-engaging. Jugs are gonna be used right away, trying to keep Jaina alive as Blaze pushes forward. Malganus is out of range for my healing at the moment. Does he care? I don't know. Vala's not gonna live through this damage more than likely. Jaina taken down as well. And now I am forced to back up stitches while all that was happening was cleaning up a mercenary camp that would have been pushing in towards our core. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, uh, we can go with two for one now, which is going to make it so our heal splashes to two targets rather than just one. Might make it a little bit easier for me to keep Jaina and Vala alive. I don't really know. It's gonna be 10 seconds or so until they're back up. So we do have some pressure on this top and middle keep from the enemy team. Stitches moving up is going to land a hook on a minion, but it was really close. All right. Jaina's here. Will the ring land? It does. We'll go ahead and throw out the blinding wind and I'm just gonna start channeling this heroic ability right away. And hopefully they keep pushing up. We wanna get in his way so he can't move too far, but it looks like he already used the stun. And we're just holding down Q, making sure we get Blaze. Good sleep on White Mane. Might allow us to catch up here. Good stun as well is going to keep her controlled, and now we're in a dominant position. But of course, in the bottom lane, we have a lot of catapults moving forward. We're going to need one person to go back and defend that. Hopefully someone does. Unfortunately, everybody's going back. That's okay. That was a good kill. We have a little bit of, of map pressure now. Okay, only Jaina went back. Fall actually canceled her back. And Jaina should be able to clean that up, no problem. We are taking core damage, though. But not much. Okay, okay, okay. If we can push with this, that would be great. If we could get boss, that would be great. I think our healing potential goes up quite a bit with the two for one talent. And I do think it was a mistake here not to get the spell power. I just want to say that for the record. I do think I messed up with that. Uh, Jaina needs to clean up that. She's still down in the bottom lane, so we are going to be outnumbered if White Man comes up to reinforce, but as of right now, we're still even. Great Hook is gonna pull him way out of position. He's channeling his ult because he doesn't know what else to do, and that's gonna be a dead Mephisto. Good job. Really nice hook, really nice hook. Jaina's still not with us, still cleaning up the bottom lane. I wanna try to roam with the team to potentially get some kills. She's been down there a long time. <laughs> Just kill the camp and leave. The enemy team could be going for boss, that's true. We should be able to defend boss, though. Go ahead and kill this Nidus. Follow scattered it out. Don't die. Great ring! Can she kill Luna? Nicely done. Still, we can defend boss, no problem, no problem, no problem at all, no problem at all. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Jug can heal two allies at once, I think. Activate to heal nearby heroes. What does this do? 
Yeah, maybe we'll try Mist Weaver. I've never tried it. I don't know if it's good. Let's go. So basic attacks and serpent attacks reduce its cooldown. Is that correct? Okay. So we got most of the objective. This boss will not deal any damage to our core. Basic attacks and cloud serpent attacks reduce the cooldown of Mist Weaver by one. Well, with the increased duration, that could be quite good. Again, I wonder if that combos with the splash of the Cloud Serpent. Maybe that would be be really good. Uh, I am moving down here by myself, which is a little scary, but at least we're removing a Nidus from the game. I do think prioritizing that bottom camp is a little bit better than this top mercenary camp, but you know what? The friendly team wants to do this. And that's a okay. Uh, there is a pretty big push up in the top lane right now. Let's just clear this out with Jaina. They died pretty fast this time. And we need to apply pressure and look for a pick. I wish I had a way of clearing out creep. So this heals for 327. So it's a spot heal with a 30 second cooldown that we can lower the cooldown of. This would be a great camp for us to pick up. Just came back. The enemy team does have vision of us here. I'm going to ping for some more assistance. Make sure everyone's coming. We don't know where anyone on the enemy team is, so they're probably making their way down to us. We do spot a couple of them in the middle lane. Top has a giant push. That's a bit of a problem. We might need to clean that up soon as well. Stitches. Using the Hungry Hungry Hippo, actually completely stopping the Ring of Frost from dealing its damage. I'm using Jugs just to keep Stitches alive. Gonna be using my Mist Weaver as well. Mephisto jumping in the bunker, and that's gonna be a kill on Stitches, as well as a kill on me and Vala. Damn. That was pretty catastrophic. I think that cost us the game. Top lane still has a giant push that we didn't stop because of the fight. And the enemy team should just be able to walk up to core and win the game. Even if they channel the objective, I think they win at this point. Why doesn't this show my full health? Is it because there was too many applications of damage? I think so. So I was just kind of experimenting with some stuff here. I don't know if Mist Weaver is the go-to. And like I said, I did mess up with not getting the spell power with this particular build. But Lili has a lot more options for builds that you can do. And of course, damage Lili is still a thing. The Water Dragon is still pretty good at nuking down enemy combatants. Uh, one option we could have picked up at level 20 that is great for survivability as well is the armor from having your trait active. So if you walk in and you take some damage, not only are you lowering your cooldowns, not only are you getting mana back, but you're also going to be uh, generating up to 30% damage reduction, incoming damage reduction from your trait as well. All of those things of course, can be really good. So maybe don't follow this, you know, exactly. <laughs> or at all. I don't know. I don't play Lily. But uh, she's definitely on the upswing as of late. She seems like a pretty solid character to pick up. Does this reduce our... It's only basic ability cooldowns. Okay. So that's it. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at Lee Ming. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.